In this tutorial, I'll show you guys how to do a simple, incredible logo in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Retail Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a super simple, incredible logo in Photoshop. We're going to work with one or two different fonts and as well some shapes. Now, don't worry, if you don't have the shapes, just have a look down below. In the description is a link where you can download the Tronic Design Media Package for free and get all the shapes that you want. Yeah, guys, let's get right away into the tutorial and I'll show you how to do an incredible logo. Okay, so over in Photoshop, as you guys can see, again, I've got the background and my design ready for you guys. I quickly want to run through the background and then we start right away with the design. So, if also, if you are new here and want to download my background, just have a look down below. In the description is a link which you can follow to my website and you can download for free all of my backgrounds. So first layer is just a black layer. The reason for this is again so I can put this on a lower opacity, the second layer which is the background and then obviously the logo will shine through a little bit more instead of just having it bright. I talk about this quite a lot in the tutorial so if you watch some more of my tutorials on the channel you will understand why I do this. But let's get over to this background here. So first of all, what I did is just have a complete normal background like this. It's basically just a shot that I had from a scenery out of the wild. And again over here, you guys can see I turned this over to a smart object and then added the Gaussian blur on top. So this is the original. You guys can download that or if you want also the um, blurred one. So the technique is super easy. You can just switch this again to a smart object over here, new smart object now obviously, but it will say turn to smart object. Then you go to Gaussian Blur over at Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can just give this a slight blur on top of that, normally around two to four. Okay, so that was my first step. Then I wanted to make it a bit more orange and red, a bit more warmth. So I gave it another uh, selective color adjustment layer. So let's open this, and you guys can also see here under my neutral tones, I just spent a bit in the cyan, minus 51, uh, magenta is to zero, otherwise it's just going to get very magenta -y, purple, I didn't like that. Then yellow, plus nine a little bit, so playing with this a little bit, and blacks kept that to zero as well. On top of that, just some more contrast, again another adjustment layer with brightness and contrast, super easy here under adjustment, brightness and contrast. Let's go back to this, so you guys can see it's really a lot of contrast right now. Brightness 0, contrast 63. Yeah, great. Then on top of that, last technique what I did was master shortcut. So that's basically Command, Alt, Shift and E together, all together. Then you get one solid layer and I added just a small uh, flare effect on top of that with another plugin called Filter, Red Giant Software and then it's called Knoll Light Factory I talked about. Uh, this in a last tutorial also and I have a tutorial which is linked right away here in the video where you can learn more about this plugin as well. Great, so you guys can download this picture from my website or again if you want this one as well. Great, so that's enough about the background. Let's get into the design. Let's open this quickly and I'll just show you guys what I'm going to start out with. Firstly the text at the top, the, then we go to incredible and then the ribbon homemade and since. Great, let's turn this off. I'm going to start right away with the text tool. You guys can also press T on the keyboard. I'll make a bit of selection here and write in small letters the. You guys can see that the font is not selected yet. So I'm going to go over here to my font selection and we're going to work with something called Herotic, I think. Hikori Jack, here it is. You guys can also find this in the description down below. I've linked it again. Great, so let's make this a bit bigger. I'm going to go with like 30, 35 or something. Yep, like so. And you guys can see my tracking is still completely broken. I'm going to go also with regular under the font. Regular light. I'm going to go with regular. Keep it to a white color. Okay. And the tracking, obviously, firstly down to zero. Yeah, and I might even take this a little bit down. Minus 20. Also, if you don't have the character box, go to window and select character box over here. Okay, I'm going to accept this move this somewhere here into where I think is the center. Okay, great. And then I'm going to start right away out with incredible. So I'm just going to do this a bit quicker. Take the text tool, make a selection here, and in capital letters I'm going to write incredible. 
uh, or E, there we go. Okay, select everything. And the font needs to also be changed. So for that font, I'm working with Cassandra something. Let's press C on the keyboard. Okay, Cassandra Bolt, there we go. Cassandra Bolt. Again, you guys can find that down below in the description. I've also linked it for you. First of all, I'm going to go something with like 60 font size. That's good for me. And also my tracking here, I want to take this to minus 60. So it's just a bit closer together, all the letters. Okay, accept it. White is also the color selected. Move that somewhere over here. Okay, and I'm a bit unsure where to place this right now. So let's go to view, new guide, horizontally, and then say 50% over here. If you're also new to this, please have a look on the channel. I've created a few more tutorials teaching you how to do this. It's called one-on-one -on -one Photoshop for beginners, the playlist, if you want to watch that. Okay, vertical, also 50%. Okay, and then I can see incredible, looks kind of okay to me. Spacing-wise, I'm going to just take the, space that also just with my cursors, left and right a little bit, and up a little bit. Great. And now, right away, we're going to start working again with some shapes. If you don't have the shapes that I have, so let's actually go there quickly. It's the shape library over here. Select the custom shape tool. And in the shape library over here in the top, you guys can see that I have a ton of shapes. So if you're here every week, you most probably downloaded this already. But if you're new, have a look in the description down below. I've added a link where you can also download all of my shapes for free. And yes, all of these shapes, you can download them for free. Okay, let's go and select the ribbon that I want to. It's number ribbon 3 over here, I think. Okay, ribbon 3, yes, select that. And I'm just going to hold shift on the keyboard and trying to make a big spaced ribbon here. This time I'm also thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm actually, what, I'm, what I just thought now is taking the move tool. So it should start somewhere over here. Yeah, and obviously end somewhere over here. So maybe this needs to be slightly bigger and slightly moved over. So don't worry, once you've created this, okay, you can also press command T to get back into the transform mode. And it's a smart object, so it won't distort. Hold shift, select an anchor point from the side, and literally just drag this a bit bigger. So you don't need to go in and create this again. Okay, let's go to view, clear the guides, okay, and it's obviously black. We want this to be white. So first of all, I'm going to move this up with my cursors a little bit. I'm doing this also quite quickly. Take a bit more time when you do this. Now, I'm going to double click here onto this layer. I can either go over here and select the white or you can press U and go back into the shape tool and just a new application bar here at the top under fill, change this to white again. Okay, great. I'm going to hide these little outlines here. You will maybe see this. It's a bit irritating. Oh, I hate them actually. That's why I always turn them off. It's super easy to do that. Command, Shift and H. That means you're hiding it and you have more space for your design. Great. I'm going to go back to the shape library here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to just create a new layer. So otherwise, the next shape will be on the same layer, which we don't want. I'm going to move this also down to the... I'm going to tell you guys right now why I'm doing this. I'm going to go back to the shape library. And here, after ribbon 3, the next shape is called spike. So you can just select the spike. Hold shift. And maybe I'm not going to hold shift this time. Yeah, like so. I'm going to drag it really nice and big. And drop it. Okay, great. Also here on the fill, I'm going to say white foreground color. Great. Hide the outlines with Command Shift H. And I'm going to place it somewhere over here. And now, you don't need to duplicate the step. Just press Command J, duplicate it, and transform it. So under Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontally. Hold Shift. I showed this in the last tutorial. And now you can just literally move the shape over. Okay, let's try this again. Shape. And we're going to place it somewhere over here. Okay, great. Then I will maybe take the still a bit up. Okay, let's just select the right text and the right layer. Great. Now, like I showed you guys earlier, that's why I moved this shape down. So I can select shape 2, shape 2, copy, and the, holding shift on the keyboard. And press command G, put that together in a group. And just also right here, maybe spike with the, something that you like. Okay, also, I'm a Mac person, so I'm going to press Command J, Command G, Command J, whatever. If you're a Windows person, you have to press Control when I say Command. Okay, let's take the whole design actually here, the whole layers, press Command G again, 
and this will be design 2. And I'm just going to move this to the top. Great. With the move tool now, I'm going to take the whole design and move this just up a little bit because I still need a bit of space at the bottom. Okay, something like that. Great. Next technique. So we're going to select, first of all, we're going to open the group. Under Incredible, we're going to select the text tool. Make a nice big selection here. I hope I'm not going too quick through the tutorial. If I do, do let me know in the comments down below, please. Okay, Home, Made. I'm just writing this out with the same font. First of all, I'm going to change the font again to something called Hictory. Let's just find this over here. Hictory deck. There we go. Again, it's also linked in the description down below. First thing that I see over here, I would definitely make a space in here. Maybe even two. Great. Okay, select all of it. I'm going to change the size. So that will be maybe something like 30. Let's sort it. Okay, and I did a mistake already. I'm going to just accept it. So I already saved these font types and also the size and everything. So again, what you should do is rather take the pen tool here and make an anchor point over here and a second anchor point over here, but keep on holding. And then you're going to just create a really nice path here, a line, a red, round, nothing red, round path. Okay, and now select the text tool. Remember, you've still got the same settings over here, so you don't need to select them again. Literally go over to the path, wait that this little symbol appears, click over here, and you're just going to write it again. So all in capital letters, um, home, remember, double spacing, twice, and then made, great. And I want to just select a different font color, maybe black so I can see it. Yep, and that was not right, so H big. Home, double space, mate. Great, now we finally have it. Okay, and I might still work with my tracking. Let's have a look. Minus 20, 60 is too much, so maybe like minus 20. That's totally up to you how you want to do it. Okay, accept it. Uh, maybe just one or two spacings in the front so it's nice and centered. And with the move tool up a little bit. Great, so we can now delete this second layer here, which was our first homemade layer. And now, like I showed you guys also in the last tutorial, I want to cut this out. It's super easy to do. Select the homemade layer, right click, then go to create work path, zoom in. I'm just Z on the keyboard, zooming in. Press P on the keyboard for the pen tool. Now, inside of that path, hit right click, make a selection, zero feathering. And now, we're just going back to our shape one, which is basically, again, our ribbon over here. We have to rasterize this. Again, remember that it's a smart object, so this will not work if I try to hit delete now. It will just delete the complete layer. So this is a mistake. So you need to first rasterize this. It's also simple to do. Just hit right click and say rasterize layer. Okay, now I'm going to hit delete, and you will not see anything. It's because my homemade layer is still turned on. So turn this off and press Command D to get out of the selection here. And I can also press Command Shift H, hiding everything. And you can now see that the background is shining through. Great. I showed this in a few tutorials before. It's nothing out of this world. Anyone can do it. OK, let's continue. Text tool, make a nice big selection here. And I'm just going to write since. And for this, I might even, all in capital letters, yes, since, I don't know, whatever year you want to take. Mine will be 1973. And obviously, my most beloved font, Helvetica Neue. I'm also going to take that again. Here we go, Helvetica Neue. Obviously, I should select my text first. Yes, good morning. OK, then <laughs> I will also go to Helvetica Neue over here. Make this a bit smaller. And maybe going to work just with like seven or eight. Seven is fine, that I think. OK, but the tracking should be something like 200, 300. Let's go with 300 and 20 maybe. Yeah, I like that more. OK, then accept it. And obviously, the fonts need to be white. OK, the font color, accept that. And also move that over a little bit. Now, the last shape that I still want to do is just again back to the shape tool here. And we're going to back into the shapes. Let's have a look right at the bottom. I've created another cool ribbon here. I can just make this nice and big. Oops, let's do it like so. Again, remember, yep, it's creating a new empty layer, so you're not working on an existing shape that it might not work that good. Again, I'm going to press Command T, rotate this a little bit, okay, and accept it, move this up. And also, you can now double click onto the layer, just make it white, okay, 
and accept. Again, I'm going to hide the outlines, Command Shift H, and take Sins and that other shape and just move this down a bit. Now, you might also be asking yourself, Manny, I do not have all of your shapes. What should I do? Don't freak out. Just have a look down below in the description. I've added a link where you can download the Tronics Design Media Package for free. And also you can download all of my shapes. So if you're completely new to this, do have a look. Download my shapes. Go crazy. Create the best and most amazing designs that you've seen. And yeah, I would also love to see them. So show them to me, send them to me or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, okay guys, so basically that is it. Again, a super simple logo, some simple shapes to work with. And yeah, only a few fonts that we've used. And don't forget, down below in the description is a link where you can download the Tronics Design Media Package for free. So yeah guys, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up, share it with all your buddies who are new to Photoshop, and thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Yeah, I'm still here. You too? Okay, that means you're interested in some more tutorials. So do have a look here on the right hand side. We've linked all the best tutorials for you. Just click right away here and you'll get linked to the best tutorials. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, check down below. You can also hit the subscribe button there. And yeah, thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial.